Okay. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of The Book Report, presented by The Millions. I'm Mike. And I'm Janet. For this week, I read a book called The Mad and the Bad by Jean-Patrick Manchette. It is insane. It is completely insane. It is possibly the most violent book I've ever read. And, of course, we just read an extremely violent book, Three Fifty of Seven Killings. This one makes that look like a, like a Care Bears story. The first paragraph is a hitman killing somebody with a, hack, a hacksaw blade. And he's a, you know, an assassin. And, and that's like how, you, the, you, how you're introduced into the book. <laughs> this really graphic uh, description of a guy using a hacksaw blade to cut a guy's heart into pieces. It's basically about this uh, guy named Hartog. His uh, brother and sister-in-law recently died in a plane crash leaving... Uh, their uh, son, who I believe is about six or seven, as an orphan. And, you know, uh, Hartog sees this kid, his nephew, as kind of a rival, you know, because he's also heir to their parents' fortune. And so he hires a, a woman from an insane asylum named Julie to uh, be the boy's nanny, or like caretaker, you know. And then he hires, um, what's his name, Thompson, the hitman, who we previously know from cutting a guy's heart into pieces with a hacksaw blade, to kill them. This uh, hitman, Thompson, kidnaps uh, the, the nanny, Julie, and the little boy, Peter, and um, they escape from him, and he follows them across France. I, I just hate how insane and bloody and violent it is, and I loved it because it's kind of funny. There's not really one likable character in the book. They're all terrible. Like, the, the businessman is a complete dick. The... Uh, uh, the nanny who's, uh, you know, there for like a, a nervous condition is, turns out to be violent and uh, crazy, you know, unlikable. Uh, the little the little kid is a, is a total jerk. I mean, he's six really? and seven. Yeah, he's a total spoiled brat. And uh, Thompson, you know, Thompson the hitman is actually maybe the most likable character in it, even though he's an amoral assassin. Um, Just like uh, the dude from Breaking Bad, Mike. Yeah, 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 actually, yeah. It's just like this unceasingly violent um, uh, book, but it, it's almost like there's something almost joyful about it. Yeah, not not for the kids. Great. We need more violent nihilism in American literature. There, I don't really think there's a lot, you know? Yeah, there's... In American literature, nihilism is always connected to... Uh, self-reflection. Yes, yeah, exactly. The nihilism can be so much more fun than that. <laughs> yes, it, I mean, I think the... the look, look to the French and the Russians, nihilists. I don't know yeah. if there's any um, American writers who are doing... James Elroy kind of comes close. He does have this kind of moral, yeah. you know... Uh, McCarthy. Structure, structure. Sir. Cormac McCarthy. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Sort of like, like insanely like blood meridian especially oh geez yeah he had, he had like nihilistic characters but his books aren't nihilistic have you ever read chuck palahniuk i think palahniuk is um is also my mind, kind of a moral writer i think he probably doesn't i don't even know if he thinks of himself as that but i think even in fight club there was like a with the, the nihilism and violence i think he had a point. He's not didactic. He's not uh, morally didactic at all. But I think there's, you know, I think he has messages in, yeah. in, in his books. Man, we can't keep the morals out of our nihilism. I know, I know. It's like just, Get out. just once. Yeah, come on. Come on, America. We just want fun. We just want fun books about murder. <laughs> we just want some morality-free, violent nihilism. Come on, publishers. We're laying down a challenge. You will sell at least two copies. <laughs> unless you just mail them to yeah, us. Yeah, we'll just get them free. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Uh, and we hope you will be too. You'll never walk alone, Mike. You'll never walk alone at the end of the world, Janet.